told my name is Darren Long, I'm the creative director of uh, South China Morning Post. Um, and I want, I'm going to talk to you today about translating data into journalism. Um, it seems a, a, a perfect opportunity to, to do that through uh, by looking at the various um, graphics we've done on coronavirus. Um, but just to just to give a little bit more background on on my role, uh, which is as a creative director. Now, what that means is uh, is I basically uh, bridge bridge the gap between the editorial team and the and the visual team, um, and uh, that's sort of by, by it's to make sure that both sides are speaking the same language, and I mean that metaphorically and and literally. And our our team is very multicultural. Um, we have, we have a Spaniard, a Costa Rican, a Chilean, mainland Chinese, Hong Kong Chinese, myself a Brit. Um, and we, we can all understand each other. We have one other member of the team, he's Texan. He's a little bit hard to understand, but we just about, we, we, get, we get by. Um, so, uh, so, so there's, there's, the, there's the literal language, but then there's the metaphorical language, which is, which is when it comes to dealing with the visuals and the words people. Now, now some of that is, is slightly, uh, can be slightly confusing because I think for the for the for the, the traditional journalists they have a tendency to be um, uh, to to uh, start with the conclusion and work their way backwards. So they'll they'll gather data to um, back up their argument. Um, in the in the infographic team, we go the opposite way. We we gather the data and we we use that to tell the story. Um, and by data, I mean apps, I, I mean visual assets. So to me, data is information and that information, uh, can be absolutely anything. Um, now I, this, uh, this particular slide, I think, um, you know, I don't want to, I hate to use a cliche, but, um, it, you know, picture tells a, uh, is equivalent to a thousand words. Now, this, this one was, um, was one of the slides we used as, a, as, a, as an intro to um, when we first started doing the uh, coronavirus stories. Uh, and this is by Adolfo Arantz. Um, for me, this is, this is an infographic in its own right. It's, 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 I, I just love it. You've got the, the, the sort of the murkiness, the shadiness, the shiftiness of the characters, the sort of the paranoia, everyone looking around, they're all wearing masks. There's a sort of m murkiness to the image um, so for me this this really sets sets the tone and um, data and, and journalism for me are, are, are many different things um, now um, I going back to what I said earlier about the um, uh, data um, the data needs to tell the story it, I, it shouldn't be there to back up the story uh, a lot of a lot of the times, like with business stories, will the will the, the reporters will write the story, will supply um, various charts and graphs to to back up their argument. Now, for me, for the infographics, we we go beyond that and we we take we let the data tell the story. So, for me, a perfect infographic or an infographic that works well is one where if you remove the data or if you take out those charts. It no longer makes sense. So basically the, the, the data is the story and without those visual assets, you no longer have a story. If you can take them out uh, and, and the story still makes sense, then, uh, then it's not an infographic or a data visualization. Uh, then the other thing I wanna talk about a bit is um, how you uh, turn, it, to, turn data to uh, journalism. Now, one of the main things for that to me is you, you, you have to know who your audience is or understand the audience. Um, and, and to do that, you need to explain to them why the story you're doing matters. Um, now, uh, at SCMP, we, we have a very uh, clear uh, modus uh, to, to, to operate in. Uh, we have a clearly set vision, which is elevate thought. And we have a mission statement, which is to lead the global conversation about China. So uh, with all the coronavirus stories we've done, you, as, as you can see in this slide, um, they're, they're all from the perspective of Asia, um, either explaining Asia to the West or um, just uh, 
giving more details to the local audience. Um, the other thing is, I, I know most of us uh, that, that will be in this uh, in the data fest. We all uh, love data, um, but data is not very sexy to most people. So the thing we do at South China Morning Post, and I think it's a bit of a, um, a a bit of a keynote for us, is we try to look for the human side. So this goes back to that that first uh, slide I showed of the of the guys in the mask. Back to, and and then this slide. You know, we this story was very heavily uh, data driven, very very uh, uh, lots of numbers. But in order to to get that uh, to, to to draw readers in and keep them interested, this illustration I think is is lovely. You know, we we were looking at um, all the stuff that was going on in China um, when it when the um, when the outbreak first happened. And there's really eerie pictures of of, uh, of densely populated cities that were suddenly empty, with uh, with with people in these in these suits. And uh, you know this one I particularly love because of the guy in the background who's just you know looking back over his shoulder to see what's going on around. So uh, very much very much the human side, not just not just the fact that it's hand drawn, but but the sort of the humour in it. Um, now, for us, for the for the coronavirus story. Uh, we were, I guess we were at a at kind of at an advantage for, from a news telling point of view. Um, the, 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 um, it, the story broke in, in Wuhan. Um, and I, I think, uh, at the time for the rest of the world, it, it didn't seem a big deal. You know, it was just, there's a few handful of people getting pneumonia type symptoms, but in Hong Kong, we'd been through SARS. So we, we kind of had a premonition about about this. So we, we jumped on this story immediately um, uh, with South China Morning Post and um, we, we knew it was going to be much bigger than just a, a local Chinese disease and a much bigger than a regional disease. Uh, it, it was very clear to us. So we, we, we jumped on this. We'd, we'd learned from um, when we were covering the Hong Kong protests last year, we learned that there was, you can't sit on the story with infographics, this, this is something we we had done previously. Um, so, we uh, with with the with the um, protests, we started the story, and we 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 never managed to quite catch up with the news. There was one particular infographic we wanted to do to show the escalation of violence between the protesters and the police, uh, and, and that was pretty crazy um, because we never caught up. We were constantly doing all these graphics and charts and, and getting them ready, and then there'd be new story breaking. Um, so in the end, we, we, we looked at doing, uh, marking the three months, then the six months, and it ended up we published on the 100 days. What we learned from that was just break the news, do the story immediately. So uh, when we realized that this, uh, the coronavirus was, was gonna be a big deal, we started preparing immediately. Uh, as you can see from the, from these slides, I mean they they are kind of politically incorrect now, uh, but it shows how fast we were on the story because it, it's called Wuhan virus, um, which, which of course you, we, you can't say now. Uh, but but at that point, um, it didn't have a name. It wasn't COVID nineteen, um, and uh, China was uh, and and the WHO were very clearly saying. Uh, uh, it's it, it's not a not a uh, pandemic and uh, nothing to worry about and it can't even be uh, transmitted human to human so that was um that was the moment we 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 figured okay the second they announce it's human to human transmission we run this story because we, we we were certain it was so you can see how on the, the first slide on the left was was where we broke the story wuhan virus visual explainer we did uh, 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 quite a lot of text and then we went into a we showed where wuhan was now the part of the reason we knew this was going to be a big story because it broke in wuhan wuhan is a hub city right slap bang in the middle of China. It's very, very important. You have Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, all these countries coming, all these um, China, very important Chinese cities all coming into uh, Wuhan. It's a huge uh, university hub and all the traffic goes out all around the world. Um, so in, this, in the second slide, we, 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 uh, is when we updated 
of the story a couple of days later. Then on the third slide, uh, this is a few days on from there, when uh, or actually a few weeks on from there, where uh, the coronavirus, uh, well, it had been the Wuhan virus or Chinese virus had been renamed the coronavirus. And uh, there was data out explaining that the, the coronavirus uh, turned into uh, COVID-19. Um, now, we, we, uh, we had to keep re-nosing it, updating it, and we, uh, we put in the total, uh, right at the very beginning, we showed, uh, this, this of course is, is quite late on, um, but, but we used uh, live data to show each country as it became ready, uh, or so not as it came ready, as, as the virus uh, kicked in there. Um, so we put the, the total cases and the total number of deaths. Uh, we realized that was one of the, the, the key thing about the story. Um, and with infographics and the way we work, work at SMP, we're always trying to uh, uh, just cut everything back, distill it right down to its very essence. Um, so we, we, we realized that the, the most interesting thing in the previous graphic was the death tally, the, the, the tally. And uh, very early on, we, we quickly uh, built an embed the first time we'd done anything like this, uh, we used a Google spread Google sheet. We we uh, keyed we put in eleven cells, and uh, the reporters could go in and, and write down the cases. Uh, at this point, you know, we 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 realized it was going to be big, but we didn't realize quite how big. So, uh, in the first slide on the left, you can see it's still called Wuhan virus. There were five hundred and forty cases in 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 China uh, and just a few cases around the region. So, so we, we felt we could just do this widget with 11 cells, but it got bigger and bigger and bigger. So we had to keep, uh, we'd come in in the morning and the, 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 uh, the Google doc would be broken because uh, we hadn't anticipated all these countries coming in. So we'd have to go in and reset it. Um, long story short, we, 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 we kept rebuilding the widget um, so that as, as you can see in, in these slides, it goes from uh, Wuhan virus to coronavirus, then to confirmed COVID-19 cases. And then in the final slide, this is the, the, the current iteration of it. And uh, this embed was uh, people uh, from all over, all news organizations all over the world, took the, uh, took the code from this and put it into their own stories. Um, so, so this generated an awful lot of traffic. But to me, this is uh, an almost perfect infographic because there's really just three pieces of data on there, but it's a whole story within itself. Um, the other thing that's important when you're uh, doing infographics is to cut the clutter. Uh, the, the, the clutter is just uh, 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 to be avoided at all costs. And you can see here, uh, we use diagrams. Uh, we tend to use a lot of black and white. Uh, that's, there's no distraction. Um, you can see that we use uh, red, mar red, red key, key marks and red outlines to um, show where the details are. Um, and on, on the right of this slide, you can see how um, as, as the story uh, developed, uh, how mainland China started off being, uh, having the most cases and then gradually the rest of the world caught up and, and overtook. And uh, that, that was added into the story. Um, one of the other things I think that's important with infographics is to create your chronology. Um, with this particular story, we had to keep changing the chronology because we were updating it as we went along. Some of the stuff that started off uh, at the beginning no longer had a place at the beginning. So uh, as you can see, there's, there's, a, there's a, the module of the, of the makeshift hospitals and China was, was incredible in the way that it managed to build hospitals so quickly. Um, so that was a, a major part of the original infographic, uh, but as the story wore on, it became less interesting, so we moved it down. Um, and, and as we found out scientific things, such as the, uh, uh, how, the, how the virus was spread, how to wear a mask properly, all those things, we, we added them into the infographic, uh, but kept moving stuff around, making, uh, depending on the, how the story developed as to how relevant that particular information was, so moved it up or moved it down. So it's a constant state of flux. Another thing with, with infographics that's important is uh, uh, lists. Um, you you want to simplify everything, and lists are a great way of doing that. Um, here we have a list of uh, the people that were evacuated from Wuhan. 
um, over on the on the right. This was part of the very early stages. Now this is this was good uh, uh, and and useful because we have uh, lots of uh, Chinese reporters. Uh, we have we have uh, obviously uh, a very strong mainland uh, Chinese uh, lady on the uh, infographic team, and she got lots of uh, data uh, 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 that was useful for us from social media in China. That's where we first heard about the um, the, the um, wildlife markets and how that was where uh, the the breeding ground had started off. Um, so. Um, yeah, here's a here's a quick video as well as when it when it started off, uh, the, there was a mad rush on masks, and uh, I think the rest of the world hadn't experienced this. But this was uh, um, Hong Kong very early on. This huge queue to get the to get the um, uh, to to get, <laughs> to get the mask. Hang on a moment, I'm having problems with getting back to my to, my, to the uh, yeah. Here we go. So um, another thing is the value of repetition. So. You, even within the story, you can keep repeating things, but you can also take uh, various parts from a story and repeat it in a different story. So uh, this is for the wildlife market. We turned this into, a, into another story altogether, um, which, which was uh, very important um, and, and explained why these wildlife markets exist in China, uh, the cultural background to them, and how um, it, it, it probably led to the spread of the virus. Uh, infographics have great impact. Uh, they, they're a great way to tell the story. You can strip out the jargon, you reward readers, they're neutral. Um, and, and in this part of the world, that's a very important thing to have so that, so that uh, you, your, your story is not open to misinterpretation. Um, uh, this the the other thing um, we do is we do print graphics, and I think they they're a great discipline because you've got to be able to doom, like that to tell the story. You've got to take one look, and the reader has to know what the story is about. And I think this one's a good example of that. This is uh, right in the middle. That that long bar in the middle is uh, all the cases of coronavirus in Hong Kong. The one on the left are imported cases. The one on the right is the is the are the local cases, and we were able to show the clusters from abroad and the clusters from the from local. And they were very very simple graphic. It it, it got people's attention immediately and and did very well virally. Um, again, this is uh, more of the same cut cut unnecessary information. Um, uh, this one was published today. Again, this is about the mobility. Uh, very, very, it shows very clearly how during lockdown, um, uh, the, as the amount of deaths increased around the world, the world went into lockdown and people's mobility just plummeted. So, so here, we, here we show it very clearly. Uh, and then and at the top, there's a very entertaining little piece of, of, well, of the size of your home. Um, the one on the uh, far left is the US. The one on the right is Hong Kong. So you can imagine working at home in a Hong Kong flat is uh, not the easiest of things to do. Um, now, the other thing I, I really enjoy with uh, infographics is, is keeping them into it, counterintuitive. I think that that's like a reward for readers. And this one we did was about uh, testing for COVID. Uh, and, and we uh, decided to use the US as an example uh, because uh, it was very much in the news at the time of, of how many uh, tests we were doing. Um, we took the, the, the map of America and, and took each state and compared that to another individual country. So that way we were able to show uh, not just testing uh, levels in the US, but testing levels all around the world. Um, quarantine in Hong Kong was very uh, important. Hong Kong's a, 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 an international city. Um, so uh, lots of people travel all the time. Uh, and actually, I've got quite a few more slides to show, but I'll, st I'll stop on this one. I'm running out of time. Um, and I'll just show you how, you know, the graphics are the important part for us at CMP of, of how we tell story, vis the, the tell visual stories using data. Uh, and the great thing with graphics is you can use them on so many different platforms, be it uh, interactive um, on the, in the newspaper as, a, as, a, as an infographic or even as an animation. So I'll just, just show you a little bit here. Uh, 
if it's going to start. Let's see. Okay, it didn't start. So uh, let's try one more time. Yeah, here we go. So you can imagine on, on the left and the right is the uh, infographic version, but you scroll down, uh, you scroll through vertically. Um, and the, the video team uh, liked what we've done, so they, they took the uh, assets from that and applied it to video. Um, and video is, is, is a great way of getting our work out there. The infographics, uh, some of these stories went viral, so we did get uh, on, on one of them several million views, which is very unusual for us. Uh, but, but the video, uh, I don't know, there's something about people that they just love to click things and see them moving. So if we can get our infographics into video, we know it's going to get uh, a lot more eyeballs.